Now that we understand how to create HTML forms like this, it's time to use that same concept to create a login form. And so inside of our templates here, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new folder called accounts that will be associated to a new app we have yet to make. Inside of here, I'm gonna go ahead and create login.html. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and do the similar process that we did with create, but I'll do it all from scratch just to kind of bring things back. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and extends base.html. And then we're gonna go ahead and do our block content. And then we're gonna go ahead and do in block. There we go. Okay, so to create a form to log in, it's a couple things. First off, the form, the HTML form itself. And then we wanna give a method of some kind. So the method is definitely gonna be post. As soon as you see a post method in a form in Django, you have to remember that we need to use the CSRF token every single time. Of course, if you forget, it, Django it does a really good job of warning you and telling you that you should remember. So I'm gonna wrap this whole thing in a div. And again, I will give it a margin with inline style, so margin top of 30 pixels, okay? And so I'll tab this in here. Now what we wanna do is two inputs. So let's go ahead and wrap these in divs as well. And the inputs we need are for logging in. Now Django by default has a username field, so we can do input type equals to text and the name being username, simple enough. And then of course we could do a placeholder here as well for username. Now by all means put a label in here and do all of those great HTML things as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave those things out just for simplicity purposes. Okay, so we've got our input of username. Now what we need to do is do input type and I'm gonna go ahead and use text for a moment and we'll give it a name of password. And I'll leave out the placeholder for this one. Okay, so we've got a username and a password, and then we're gonna go ahead and add in a button for submit. So button type equals to submit, and we'll go ahead and say login. Okay, great. So now we have our login template. So now it's time to actually create views necessary for logging in. Now, before I actually get too far in depth in that, what I wanna do is create a proper application that's gonna handle everything related to authentication or our own custom authentication. Now, this is completely optional. You certainly do not have to create an entire application for your uh, authentication. You could absolutely use it inside of the views for your main configuration, your main project. The reason I pretty much always put in an accounts app is because I almost always have to do some things related to the user account. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make a new app for that. So pythonmanage.py, start app and accounts. Again, we wanna use the plural here uh, because it's implying that this app handles accounts. Now we can have something called a custom user model that is changing the defaults that Django has. That is not something I'm gonna cover right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the server again and just take a look at what comes in the user model by default. So inside of users, we click on any given user, username and passwords in there. We've got first name, last name, email, and then a few other fields as well. So by default, it already has quite a bit of data. And there is actually a way to connect a user data to other data. We will come back to that later. Uh, but for now, we just know that the actual user model is pretty solid as it stands by itself. Okay, so let's go into our views and define our login view. And of course, it's gonna take in a request. In this case, it's gonna return render that request, the template of, well, accounts slash login.html. And we're gonna go ahead and have empty context for now, which could just be an empty direct, uh, dictionary just like that. And so the reason I know it's accounts because we just made that, of course, and it's the same name as the app itself. So accounts login is gonna render this out. And while I'm here, I might as well build a few others. So we'll go ahead and do the log out view and then the register view. Now, of course, I'm not gonna build all these out just yet, uh, but I do wanna have them in here 
just because I know that they're coming, right? And you should as well. Okay, so now that we've got this, we could already wrap this URL, but we're already at a point where we know enough about forms to handle what's going on with that form data. So let's go ahead and do that. First off, we'll go ahead and say if request dot method equals to post. Then we're going to go ahead and grab the username. And then again is request dot post dot get username. Okay. So again, I don't ever assume that the post method will have the username in there. That actual dictionary that comes through with request dot post. And the next thing is password, and this is going to be request.post.get and password. And then we're going to do some stuff here. But for now, I'll just go ahead and print out username and password. Cool. So that's bare minimum things that we should already know. After this, we're going to be using some built in features to Django. Um, so let's go ahead and now bring this URL in to our prime or this view into URLs. And so to do this, we're going to go into try Django, the configuration folder into URLs. And we're going to go ahead and do from accounts, we're going to import views. Now, this is where the recommended import, I do not, I, this is where I diverge from the recommended import. The way I recommend you do it is you import the actual functions that you're going to need to use no matter where you're grabbing it, much like we did right here. So that's actually a really a uh, simple fix. First off, we're gonna change articles and then we're gonna import and you can use parentheses here and then just import everything that you need from articles. So search view, create view, and then article detail view. And then of course we get rid of views dot here. And there we go. So I think this is a better pattern to import things from. That's just my own personal preference. You can follow it however you like. And of course you could always import views as account or accounts views. You could do it this way as well and sort of keep that previous pattern. Uh, but I really like importing the views directly. So from accounts.views, we're gonna go ahead and import the login view. And so now I'll go ahead and create a path for that login view, which of course it sort of makes sense to just do login. So login view, of course you could change it however you like. You can call it sign in, you can call it whatever. And I'm actually gonna keep these in alphabetical order unless it means that I need to change it, much like these right here. I had to keep those in that order to have the wildcard or this more dynamic URL to be later. Otherwise I keep them in alphabetical order. Okay, cool. So now I've got this login view here. Let's go ahead and navigate to it just by going to slash login. And there we go. So we've got a username and password. We might as well actually bring that placeholder back and password. Okay. So now it shows me username and password. I'll do ABC and one, two, three, hit login. Again, it clears out. No big, no big deal there. That's not really uh, that hard to imagine as to why it did that. It should have printed out both username and password, and sure enough, it did. Now, we don't actually wanna show our password to our user all the time, right? That's not typically something that is considered secure. Uh, several reasons why. Number one, if somebody's right behind you and you just type out your username and then your password, especially if it's a bad one like that, well, that's not secure. So let's actually change the input type to being password. Save that. And again, we'll refresh and submit it or just do ABC123, hit log in. And what we'll see here is ABC123, right? So it's still printing out that data, uh, you know, so it's still printing out. Uh, that's not great, right? Um, it's not great in the sense that that means that you could accidentally leave this print statement in here, bring it into production, and now have a security flaw in your system. So yeah, we wanna avoid doing that. But while we're learning, it's okay to have it printed out so you see what's going on, but certainly something that we definitely wanna remove. So remove this, you know, remove it. Remember to remove it. Okay. Now, the other part of this is notice that it is showing a username and password already here. So it's actually auto filling for this. And to get rid of that, if I open up a incognito window, it won't show up, right? So by all means, use an incognito window 
or a private window, which is um, a, a nice way to prevent passwords from automatically being entered. But this, of course, is my admin user and its password. So I actually did save it uh, to my browser itself, which is completely fine for this development. Okay, so now that we've got this, how do we actually log this user in? Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to verify or authenticate this user prior to logging them in. In other words, we need to check their password and username with the request and then log them in. Now, Django does this for us, right? So we can go ahead and do from Django.contrib.auth. We're going to import authenticate and log in. Notice that there is a function called login. So our view needs to be login view or something different than just login. Otherwise, you're going to have a namespace error because you'd have two functions called login. And so the first thing I want to do is after I have this login view, I'm just going to go ahead and say user equals to authenticate and request username equals to username, this actual right here, and then password equals to password. And then what we want to say here is if user is none, then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to return the same stuff. And now I'll just add in my own context being something like um, error and invalid username or password. Now I use something more like this so that it's not actually showing that this is either one is incorrect, right? Uh, this is another security measure is just to be like, hey, if you're telling them they have the wrong password, then they can just keep trying different passwords. Now, if they have the wrong username, well, hopefully they'll recognize that and the user would recognize that themselves. Um, so it's just a little, little bit of a security feature there. Um, and so that's basically saying if the user is none, then we render that page out over again with this context. So that also means that in my login, then I'm going to go ahead and say if error, then we'll just go ahead and show that error. So I'll go ahead and P and we'll just do style and color of red. So this will turn our text red for that error. Okay. And so now um, we have a way to check the username and password. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. This time I'm gonna give it a whatever name and hit login. And it says invalid username and password. Okay, cool. So if I hit login now, it doesn't actually do anything for me, but it actually did like validate this user, which we can test by after the is none part, we can print out the user itself. So if this condition is not met, it's gonna actually make it down to the user. We log in. And now it's actually showing that user and my whatever password of learn code, right? So it's giving me all of this stuff here. And so what we want to do then is actually log this user in. And it might seem like they're logged in already. So if we actually went into the admin, we're already logged in, right? So this user is in here. So I'm going to go ahead and log that user out and then go into login. And now if I go to login again and try to go back into the admin, of course, it's not going to let me in. Okay, so that's what I want to change. I actually want to log that person in or that user in. And to do that is using just this login method. And that is also really simple. We literally just call login of the request with the user. And again, the user cannot be none. If the user is none, this won't work. So once we actually log that user in, we can return a, another method. We could actually redirect them somewhere. So what I want to do is bring in the redirect shortcut and what this can allow me to do is redirect them maybe let's go ahead and just go back to the home page or we can even try going into the admin so let's try to the admin based off of this user and then we'll bring it back to what the redirect should be okay so we're going to log in cfe user logs in look at now i'm logged in great hey look at that you now have a way to log in users and send them where you'd like okay so next thing is again log in this user is logged out Let's bring them back to the home page now. Save that. Refresh in here. Hit login. Brings them to the home page. Pretty cool. Okay, so what is happening here is just a simple login method for our project, right? So granted, there's things that we can do to improve this. 
We could also render out what was incorrect, or we could send that to our own database. Like, hey, this is not a valid username, or hey, this is a password that keeps on being tried. So perhaps we want to log that password as a bad password. I'm not saying that you should do that because logging raw passwords and usernames is not always the best idea. But if it is one that keeps failing, then it might be a good idea of one that you should block permanently. Now, of course, that's getting a little bit more advanced than what we've got here, but we now have a login view and now it's time to actually create that log out view. And that's actually pretty easy to do. So we'll do that uh, very shortly.